Tomorrow I'm gonna to be launching Inbox Zero on Product Hunt. This is the second launch I'm doing there. The first launch went really well, it came in first place. So I'm hoping I can at least get a top five this time. My product is called Inbox Zero. It's an AI personal assistant to handle your emails for you. And it also has some other calls like a bulk unsubscriber to quickly unsubscribe from tons of emails in one go. You should definitely check it out. And if you're watching this video the day it's released, so October 1st, I'm currently live on Product Hunt. I would very much like your support. The link is in the description below. Inbox Zero is also open source, so you can decide to self-host it. And if you're a developer, I'd very much like a star on GitHub. So quick look at what I did last time. I'm gonna try and do similar things this time. It worked last time, why not try do the same thing again? But here you can see my product. It came first of the day, 985 upvotes. Short description of what it does. I have a video and some slides explaining the benefits of the product and how you can use it. And then here you have my maker comment. So I'm gonna try and follow a similar style this time. Now, one thing that Product Hunt did recently, around a year ago, they stopped automatically featuring every product on the homepage. So in the past, let's say you got 200 upvotes and you were the second highest product of the day, you would be listed second on the homepage. But now what happens is you also have to be featured. So even if you are second highest in terms of votes, but you're not featured by the Product Hunt team, you will not appear on the homepage. So this is a real killer to a lot of indie founders. They feel hard done by because they often feel like the VC backed startups get featured, whereas they don't so much. Here you can see typewriters.com did really well on Reddit, 40K views, 200 upvotes. People like this product, but he posted it on Product Hunt and it wasn't featured. So that's a real shame for him. And then there's Nico over here, who's really upset with Product Hunt. I mean, he has a whole bunch of different complaints, but the CTO didn't even know who uh, Levels IO was. And in terms of the support, they don't really tell you anything. It's just a canned response. Hey, you will not be featured today. That's it. And you can't really do anything about it. And that's a real pity because someone like Nico, this is Product Hunt is such a great place to launch. Despite all the hate against it and people saying, oh, Product Hunt doesn't work, it does. It gets thousands of eyes on your product. It's also a good backlink for you. And this is why people keep posting and this is why people are upset when they're not featured. Now, there are teams trying to create uh, Product Hunt competitors like Launch Day. I might try and get featured here as well for Inbox Zero at the end of the week. So give me up vote there if I'm on it. But it will be a huge challenge for a Product Hunt clone to take it over. Many people have tried, but Product Hunt has some real strong network effect. You know, if when I launch on its launch day, I'm likely maybe to get 30 upvotes if I'm lucky, but that's gonna die off very quickly. In a month from now, probably everyone's forgotten about its launch day and it's just one of another hundred Product Hunt clones. So I hope the founder Dagobah is able to figure out a way to make this sustainable long-term. I think it would be cool to have more places for indie hackers to launch and grow their product. But yeah, I know how hard this is for Dagobah to go and grow this. So I just, I wish him the best, but go check it out. It's only $29 to launch and it definitely at the start you're going to get like a decent amount of eyeballs on launch day when it comes out so good way to market your product and Dagobah has a bit of a following so he'll help share the product as well so jumping back to the inbox zero launch i am scheduled to launch tomorrow basically right now it's monday september 30th i'm launching october 1st 2024 you'll see here i'm launching at midnight san francisco time that gives me the maximum amount of time to be live on Product Hunt to get the maximum number of upvotes. So that's what most people do. Um, name of the product, I've given it a tagline. So this one, I'm often thinking about different lines of copy and I've even experimented with them on the Inbox Zero landing page. So I could have gone for a line like, stop wasting half your day in Gmail. That is one of the hero copy lines I use on the website or clean up your inbox in minutes. So lines like that, that are trying to hit a pain point or explain the benefit to the user. I've decided to go with sort of just something more simple. AI personal assistant for email, open source. Just tell the user what this is. And I also give open source a mention because I hope that gives a little boost to the product as well. I don't know which way is better, but they do say here, tell us what the product does, avoid hyperbolic words and emojis. Well, no emojis here. So um, yeah, let me know what you think works better as a tagline. Of course, this is just every single thing you do to your page is just, you know, 10% increase at most. You know, if I change the tagline to something else, maybe it'd have a 1% impact on the, the release, but then everything put together, obviously some releases are much stronger than others. Links, I mean, I've just gone with the GitHub so that I can say the project is open source, which it is, and the uh, getinboxzero.com uh, website link. I might also add the Twitter. Oh, sorry, I have the Twitter here as well. So yeah, I don't <laughs> need to do that. How about the links like a YouTube link, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, description of the product. So yeah, kept, kept it quite short. I mean, it can only be 260 words at most, but again, stressing it's a personal assistant for email, the quickest way to reach Inbox Zero daily and then some of the features. So you can put your email on autopilot, bulk on subscribe from newsletters, block code emails and view analytics. And again, I mentioned it's open source. Here, chose three topics. You know, I could also choose open source as a topic here. Email productivity, AI seem like good ones. Um, I don't know how these work, but I guess a lot of people are interested in artificial intelligence. So 
I decided to put that as one of my three topics. The logo, I mean, yeah, the, this is the logo of the website. This is what it will look like. Seems good to me. The gallery, this is an important part. I don't think that many teams do it well, but it's basically like a slide deck. And basically what you see here is what the user is going to see or potentially even smaller. Let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So here you can see what it looks like in real life in my previous launch. And then there's a video at the beginning as well, which I recorded this time as well. And so the mistake a lot of people make is I'm not going to go in and click on this to like read all the small details. So if you have like 12 font text, no one's going to read that. And so really you should be looking at it as like a slide deck where you have maybe one message per slide that you want to give across to the readers. And that's about it. And so, you know, I think I did a pretty good job here of doing that. Just got a product screenshot, a bit of an interesting background with the gradient for black to blue and then some important text, which like Peer tells you the benefit. Clean up your inbox in minutes, open source privacy first and so on. And just if we take a look at what the landing page looks like today, it's interesting. Whisperflow is a product I use. Uh, so I'm going to give them an upvote. Why not? So here you can see this is pretty solid. Well, first they've gone and done the video. They don't have too much text. They have some imagery. This is a very solid pitch deck over here, right quickly and accurately anywhere. Um, so yeah, Whisperflow speak naturally write perfectly and 3x falsely in every app. I'll even stick my affiliate uh, link down below if you want to try it out. And if we take a look at another one, interview.co, but already I can see this is not an impressive deck, right? I mean, it just, it doesn't look good. The uh, screenshots here, I mean, it, these are small items, but the corners are like too rounded. This is sort of so silly to say, but overall the feeling is just like, this doesn't look like good quality. This feels a bit blurry and yeah, all this extra text. I'm not reading this asynchronous video interview and then all this small text is too small for me to read. So I'd avoid things like this. Obviously this is still doing quite well. It's still the uh, number three product of the day, but if I wanted to improve this launch, that's what I'd do. And no, by the way, you can't fully tell by the number of upvotes how good a launch actually is. The reason this has got 244 upvotes is because the team behind it has gone and shared it with 244 people or, you know, maybe 100 people or so. But it's it's a popularity contest. So just because you have a bad deck doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to do well, but it could have like a 20% impact on results or how well you do. I'm not impressed with this. I was impressed with the Whisper Flow launch over here. It just, you know, it looks five times better. So quickly what I have planned right now, last time was focusing more on clean up your inbox. Now I'm going for your AI personal assistant, label archive reply, telling you what it can do. I don't know actually if this is better. Like I definitely A-B tested and experimented with stuff. Um, I'm trying to push a slightly different angle than I have in the past. We'll see how this does. But anyway, no more newsletters you never read. Keep salespeople at the gate. Spend 50% less time on email. This is like a line I could potentially put as the first slide. I'm not sure. The only thing I'm thinking about here is like, it's a bit like high level, a bit fluffy, but yeah, maybe I will move this as the first one of my deck and then let people see more. Most of these ones at the end, people aren't going to see. So open source privacy first, they're not going to get there. And then I've, I've got just like this one at the end, like I just had it from last time. So I'm leaving it in. Now link to the video, that will be the first slide that comes up. I think this is a good one to have because it's the easiest way for someone to really learn about the product. They see Inbox Zero, it helps them cut down on their email, but you know, how does it actually do that? And so getting a video demo of the product is really helpful to convince them to maybe go and sign up themselves. You can do interactive demo, never done this before, makers, it's just me on this. Um, this is a new one, add products that helped you make yours awesome. So I've gone and put in a whole bunch, Loops, Prisma, Forever Vassell, doing a bit of a shout out to all of them here. Why not? Tiny Bird, Upstash, Resend, Shad, CNUI, Neon. So what I'm going to do is when I launch, I'm going to do a tweet where I tag a lot of these tools. I mean, one, I actually like really like using a lot of them. That's why I use them. I've experimented with so many different tools in the past, and this is the set I've uh, stuck on right now. So I'm pretty happy with them. Otherwise, I wouldn't be with them anymore. And also, you know, if I tag Tiny Bird in my launch tweet, they're going to go and give me a retweet, which is really helpful. You know, might get it out in front of another 500 people. So when I put out the launch tweet, I'm going to tag, this is my tech stack that I use, I sell Tiny Bird Upstash and so on. And a team like Tiny Bird is going to retweet that because it's good marketing for them. I'm sharing how much I love their product and they're sharing, wow, there's this great product using us. So they're going to be happy to share, especially that they mentioned on this page. So yeah, that's uh, the benefit of sharing some of these products. First time doing it, so we'll see how it goes, but I know it definitely works well in tweets. And then pricing, yeah, say what you are, I'm paid with a free trial of plan. And I've added a promo code as well, why not? And it will be live for a week. So if you want a promo code, PH2024, if you're watching this in real time. Now, other things to mention for the launch that I'm gonna do, the landing page that you have is really important. So I'm not gonna talk about landing pages here. I've done this in the past, but you know, just keep it simple and standard. Good hero copy, CTA button, social proof, images of, and maybe a video of your product, uh, more social proof here and how people like it and so on. And here you can start to see the features of the app as I go down. Very standard landing page and pricing also super important. 
if you're an indie founder, what are you trying to get out of this? Because like upvotes is cool, but really the core, me the, what actually matters to your business is, you know, increase in revenue or at least in increasing customer signups. So this is important to think about before your launch as well. Product Hunt is a one-time event. It's not going to be ongoing. I mean, I'll get some trickle down. I, I will get some traffic that trickles in over the next month or few months from Product Hunt, but like the vast majority of the traffic from Product Hunt is all going to come this week. If I get first of the day, I'll also get mentioned in the newsletter, which will be nice, which will be an extra bonus. So um, hopefully I can get that. So you really want to capitalize on this in terms of getting paid users. And for context, a lot of people think Product Hunt isn't that great. It doesn't actually bring real users. And I've had many launches that have done that where I get 200 upvotes, but it didn't bring any real users to the product. It brought zero revenue. And so you can do a launch like that and think product hunt is completely useless. But reality is, and I know this from my first Inbox Zero launch, that launch got like 800 upvotes on the day or so. And it brought in, I had around 2000 users signed up to the platform within that week. I had also done Hacker News and some other platforms, but you know, the vast, vast majority of it came from Product Hunt. And it's not just being featured on Product Hunt. Now that you're first on Product Hunt, so lots of affiliates are starting to see the product as well. I have an affiliate program, by the way, if you want to join, just go to the bottom here and click affiliates and you can join the program. But all these affiliates are now busy showing it and they would never have heard of it if I hadn't like gone viral on Product Hunt to begin with. And in terms of monthly revenue you can get from it, it can easily be $500 a month or $1,000 a month. That's like a really great start to boost the revenue of your product. And honestly, even if you get to $1,000 revenue, which I promise you is very much doable, monthly recurring revenue, that's $12,000 a year. That's a really nice bonus. And 12K a year business is worth anywhere from like forty to $60,000 to be sold. That can all be done by having a good product hunt launch. And of course, you can do everything great around the, the launch, but your product actually needs to be good and helpful to people. You know, if you're solving a problem no one cares about, then, you know, whatever you do, have a flashy, make your launch, however many upvotes you get is not actually going to help you. Now, some other tricks that I'm doing for the launch. One, I have a spreadsheet of around 100 people that I reached out to last time to help me support the launch. These are people that likely would have used Product Hunt in the past because they're in the startup world or they're indie hackers themselves. I'll share it with family as well, but like family are not super helpful in terms of if they're people that don't use Product Hunt and just signing up that day to give you an upvote. It's not super helpful for your launch and product time might even remove those votes. So I largely just stick to people and communities that I know will help upvote me and their votes will actually be valuable. If I can get around 100 votes from people I know or connections, that will be pretty solid. And then hopefully I can get another 500 just because organically and people like the product. I'm obviously going to launch on Twitter as well few different places. I use Farcast, so I'll be on there. I'm going to go in DM everyone that I've interacted with recently. So the last hundred people I've Twitter DM'd, I'm going to send them a message. I'm going to go through my email. I see the last like 50 people or so going to go and message them as well. So you could easily get up into the hundreds of people that actually get notified about this. And then I've got the existing Inbox Zero user base, which is around 8,000 emails signed up to it. I have this YouTube channel, obviously, which this video is done on this day so that I can get it out to maybe another thousand people. If this gives me another 50 votes, I'll be very happy with it. And then I'm also going to be featured in the Trends VC founder newsletter. So I don't know that 65,000 people necessarily get this video, but like a decent number of people get it. And the people getting it are very much the type of people that are on Product Hunt and will give me an upvote. I've also tried to organize to be in two other newsletters on this same day, another two AI focused newsletters. So ho hopefully they all post me on this day. Trends definitely will. Um, you should definitely sign up to Trends either way. Um, I mean, they're helping support me. So supporting them back in this video as well. If you want to follow like trends in the market, this is a great place. And what I really like about it, I actually don't follow the Trends newsletters, but I am active in the community. And so I do a mastermind in Trends every week, which I really like. And I've been doing consistently for well over a year. And you can see actually this product did incredibly well on Product Hunt. They came number one of the month. Now, number one of the month is really impressive. Like number one of the day, okay, people do it, but for week, month, that's like next level. Last thing I'll be doing, I'll be posting in WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, Slack communities, Discord communities. Over the years, I've been involved in a fair number of communities connected with quite a lot of people. So I'm going to try and get as many of them to see my product as well. So I'll be posting in all of those. Each of these might be like a handful of votes, maybe. But if you add it all up, it can give you enough momentum to, you know, if you get 100 votes within the first hour or so, now you are at the top of the list for the day for the, on the homepage. And that sort of builds its own momentum. And then you'll start to grow organically because people will see it be like, oh, I like this, they'll upvote it and that will get you even more votes to, to stay at the top. I may have said this already, but if you're launching yourself, 
like don't have high expectations for this. I mean, I, I put in a few hours to, to make this work and probably on your first launch, you'll be spending more than a few hours. It can easily be like a day or two of work and you really want it to do well. Um, but if it doesn't do well or doesn't bring you the users you want, like don't be disappointed. For my first launch, my goal was 200 upvotes. If I got that, I'd be happy. I wasn't expecting too much, wasn't expecting revenue or real users from it, although I got all of that. So I was pleasantly surprised. Overall, I have nothing to launch from this. I'm putting out this video. That's good marketing. Putting it on Product Hunt is good marketing. Everything I've had to do for the launch is good marketing in and of itself. Posting it on all these groups, you know, it's putting the actual product in front of more and more people, even if they don't go and upvote on product time so that all of that is just super helpful and regardless of what the result of the day is i'll be able to get in front of hundreds or if not thousands of new people anyway if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel every week i do a video diving into the code behind an open source project also give inbox zero a star on github and go take a look at the inbox zero product hunt launch hopefully we're doing well and we get into hundreds of votes but yeah your support is appreciated regardless of the result